The Arthur's buffalo are producing between 4 and 12 litres of milk a day. Sharon Arthur has been experimenting with the milk, transforming it into butter, yoghurt, ricotta, halloumi and mozzarella. With the um, ricotta, you definitely get a sweetness coming through. The creaminess also comes through. But uh, I, I guess with what I'm making, I rely on the natural attributes of the milk. Buffalo milk is a richer source of calcium, phosphorus, vitamins and antioxidants than cow's milk. It's also lower in cholesterol. The figure's about 43% cholesterol compared to cow's milk. So that's something that's probably fairly relevant. Retailers say these health properties are helping to boost the popularity of buffalo dairy products, which are a common ingredient in Mediterranean cooking. With our Italian, our, our Greek clientele primarily, uh, ricotta and, and the bocconcini uh, and now the buffalo mozzarella, often used in pasta dishes, uh, pizza dishes. That tyranny of distance is one of the biggest factors in, in bringing fresh ricotta mozzarella to Darwin. Having a local producer means I've got, I've got a fresh product delivered to my door um, on request. The commercial interest is encouraging for the Arthurs, who still have some regulatory hurdles to overcome. But they're confident their buffaloes will soon be a viable commercial enterprise. Oh no, it'll happen. I'm used to things that are hard to do and uh, never walked away from anything that was tough yet, so I'm not about to start. And if you want to check out that story or anything else you've seen on today's show, including our focus on English language learning, just check out our website. And that's all we have time for today. In tomorrow's program, we'll look at the art of cheese making, learn how farm waste can be turned into a valuable resource, and find out about some new methods of training elephants in Nepal. I hope you can join me then. Bye for now. Refreshing. Thursday, Geoffrey Robinson QC unearths his ancestry. Ah, the ship on which my forebears sailed to Australia. Yes. From the Scottish Highlands to Prussian palaces. Is there anything in hereditary? Discovering princes and paupers. He has very bad reputation. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Continues Thursday. Today, English Bites is all about tropical living. Listen to what makes a good tropical house. There are four main elements. The basic elements of a good tropical house is getting as much cross flow breeze through a house as possible having walls that are able to be opened and allow breezes to, to, to move through, uh, hence reducing any build-up of, of heat within a house to provide appropriate shade. To start to create shade around the house so that the buildings are being shaded. An important aspect is to, to, to lift the building out of the ground uh, to provide an elevated platform so that the house can access those breezes very well um, and to build in lightweight materials so that the, the house doesn't retain heat. There are four main elements of a good tropical house. Get cross-flow breeze, provide adequate shade Provide an elevated platform. Build in lightweight materials. These are quite formal phrases. In conversation, you'd probably say, the things that make a good tropical house are catching the breeze, having enough shade, 
been off the ground. Using light materials. Here, light and lightweight mean the same thing. Lightweight is more technical. Notice the spelling. It's pronounced lightweight. It has lots of silent letters. Listen for some important features of a tropical house.